that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Okay. Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review charge by BoardGameExchange.com. It's only board game rental website. Today, I have another very special Kickstarter review today for Keep the Crown from Jamal Green. This is for two to six players, ages eight and up, and it'll take about 45 minutes to play. And in Keep the Crown, you and your friends will be attempting to fill up a board with these poker chips that will have different gems and different coin values on them, trying to accumulate the most, uh, the most cash, so to speak. But it's not that easy because there'll be uh, special wild wizards which will be going all around and thieves which will be moving everything all around the board. Sound intriguing? Let's open it up and see how it plays. Alright, so let's take a look at what you're going to get inside of Keep the Crown. As I always like to mention, this is the promotional copy of the game, even though this is a very, very nice promotional copy of the game. Uh, one thing I want to mention in this awesome case you're going to get, uh, uh, well, you might get, I think it's a special Kickstarter thing, uh, you're going to get a lot more of these chips in here. I'm not using all the chips for this little mock hand because it would take up way too much room, but as you can see, you're going to get a boatload of chips in the regular game. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at our handy dandy rule booklet. It is full color, double sided, lots of examples, gorgeous rule booklet, very simple game to learn, and the rule booklet makes it way super simple. Uh, simple to use, it will answer every question you have. Outstanding rule booklet for Keep the Crown. Next, you are going to get your little score sheet. Not the biggest fan of score sheets, but for this game, it is kind of necessary because you're going to need to keep track of the score throughout the entire game so you can figure out who is in first place at all times and who is in last place at all times. Because if you're in first or if you're in last, you will get, if you're in first, obviously get this really nice crown one that has, I'm the leader, and you'll get a special ability, which is a pretty nice little special ability. But the real nice special ability is here on the last place one. If you're in last place, you get this I need help little multicolored magic wand thing, which will let you play wherever you want what you draw from here, which is incredibly useful and can really help you catch up if you were in last place, uh, which is very, very nice. Next, you're going to get these two dice, which you will be rolling to figure out where you're going to go. So if you roll this, you'd have a C and a 2, which means you would play on C2 or C2, which is coincidentally the same spot right there. That would be where you're playing your chips. Uh, sometimes you might get a C yellow, so you'd be right there. And sometimes if you get the same color, then you're going to put it wherever you want, which is really, really handy. Last but not least, you're going to get a boatload of poker chips. As I showed you, there's a whole bunch of them. They're going to have various different symbols on them and various different colors on them. And how this works is, this is how you're going to be scoring points. Because in this game, you're going to be trying to score the most points uh, until the whole board gets filled up. Uh, once the whole board gets filled up, whoever's the most points is going to win. There's also another way to win where if you use all your, your poker chips and the board's filled up, even if you're not in first place, you still win the game. However, I don't really see that happening too often. I think maybe maybe once every 20 games. It seems like it's a real rarity, but it is a possibility, which I always do like if there's crazy ways to win the game. But anywho, scoring-wise, how are you going to be doing scoring? You're going to be laying down these chips, and you're going to have to lay them next to each other, like this. So you put these two next to each other because they're the same shape. You could not put these two next to each other because they don't match at all. You're going to be laying down these chips and they have to match each other when you lay them down at first. So for instance, if I had this and this two is in my hand, then I could put this right here. And if I had one more gold two, I could collect the six points for all three of them. Uh, it's actually really simple. Let's just get to a mock hand so you can see how it works. So you're going to have this huge pile of chips over here called the loot. Uh, I do want to mention first, real quick, two special chips in there that I forgot to mention. There is the wizard, and then there is the thief. These will spice up the game. The wizard is pretty self-explanatory. It is a wild. You can play it wherever you want. When it's your turn, you can play it next to this gem. You can play it next to this one. You can do it wherever you want, but you really want to play these, these uh, wizards very carefully because these are going to score you points a lot of the time. Next, there is the thief. This is very useful and this is how the game is going to end because what a thief does is when you draw a thief and you want to play it, you can essentially put the thief on any gem spot and move this gem wherever you want. However, this thief is now here. He does not move, period, which means he is going to be one step closer to ending the game and also he can block stuff. So let's just say he had a green here and he had a green over here. You put this thief right here, you know what? No one's going to get those green points right there. Those are the two wilds right there. 
So, we're going to start the game. We're going to assume that this guy goes first. You're going to start with five of these poker chips. These will be your hand, so to speak. And you're going to roll the dice, and we have a blue four. So we're going to four. We're going to go to blue. We're going to draw one from the loot over here. And this was going to go right there. Now, I can play one of these from my hand if I can. But unfortunately, I really don't want to. Uh, I can't play any of these because they don't match. I can't play this gold one or this silver two. I can't play this gold five or this green gem because none of those match this. Now, I could play this thief, but it really wouldn't help me at this point in the game. So I'm just going to hold on to it. And so instead of playing, I'm just going to discard this gold one over there. Uh, I'll draw back up to five. And now it's the other guy's turn. So he's going to roll the dice. He's got A1. So we go A. We go one. We say A1. He's going to draw loot there. And he's got a wizard. Ooh, very intriguing. So he's going to look at his hand and he's going to see what he's got. Holy baloney. He's got two. Can he play both of these? He can. He's in luck. So he's going to do one. He's going to do two, and he would collect the points right here, which would be fantastic for him because this is a lot of points. He's going to get 25. He's going to get 50. He's going to gain 60 points right there. That's huge. He puts this into a stack over here to, to symbolically let him know how many points he has. He's going to write it down on his handy dandy score sheet, and then he's going to say, I am the king now. And he's going to get the special king ability, the special little king token. He's in first. The guy that's in last is going to go, oh, I get the magic wand. But not all is lost for him. Anywho, uh, he's going to draw back up to five tokens, so that's how many you got to have. And then this guy is going to roll the dice. He's got a D4. So let's see what he's got here. D, four. He's going to put whatever he draws right there. Now, these two don't match, but since you have to play there... Actually, you know what? I just screwed up. My bad. He's got the special ability, which means he doesn't even need to roll. He can play this wherever he chooses to play it. Uh, nothing in his hand is really going to help him, though. So for this particular turn, it's not going to really help him. So he'll just play it right there, and then I'll look at his hand, and he doesn't have too much good stuff to play. So once again, he's probably going to end up discarding this board, too. And anywho, you're going to go back and forth, and eventually the board is going to get filled up, and people are going to get picking up pieces, and then you're going to score more points, and eventually... Uh, you'll gain this, or you'll lose this, and you'll go from first place to last place, and all different sorts of things. And once the board gets filled up, you tally up how many points everybody has, and the winner will be the one with the most points. That, in a nutshell, is how Keep the Crown is played. Alrighty then, Keep the Crown from Jamal Green, currently on a Kickstarter near you, by the way. Uh, what are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody. It's, uh, it's a very, very light game light, light strategy game, which is not going to be for everyone. It's going to appeal to a lot of people, but if you're more into the more deep kind of strategy, it's not going to be for you. Also, uh, I didn't really feel like it was best suited for two players. Now, it's a good game for two players, but I think with more players, the game gets better. Uh, I liked it better with three, four, and five players than I did just with two players. Uh, also, I didn't like the fact that you had to continuously keep score. It just bugs me a little bit. But at the same time, I don't really know a better way to do it. And it is essential to the game because you need to keep track of who is, you know, who's got the special first place ability and the special last place ability. So it's a necessary evil in this particular case. Moving on to the pros, Keep the Crown is an enjoyable game that I think could be one of the next big gateway games. Um, I don't think this is going to be one of those games that you're going to be playing forever It's because it's got deep, endless strategy. I think it's going to be one of those games that you keep forever because this is the perfect game to introduce new gamers into the hobby. When I played this, I could not help feel like I was playing a cell phone game. As odd as that sounds, it really did feel like a Bejeweled or, or, or a Luminous or something like that where you're trying to get the three in a row and occasionally you get the wild you can put down and occasionally you can get like, you know, five in a row where it's in like a different angle and the thief moves stuff around. It really did feel like they took a cell phone game and plopped it down into this very, very cute box. Uh, cute's not the right word. I was going to say nice box. Either, anywho, getting off on a tangent there. It really did feel like a very 
awesome casual game. Uh, also, I like it because it's going to be a fantastic family game. This is what I'm going to keep because it's going to be extremely easy to teach to my son when he gets older, and it's going to help him with a variety of different things. I'm always looking at the educational standpoint of games. This is great for math. You're constantly going to be having to do a lot of math in this game. Not complex math. Uh, times in, time, uh, multiplying things by three most of the time or adding things. Very simple math, but you're going to be continuously doing that uh, in order to figure out who's in first and who's in last. That's another thing I really did like. Uh, you're very rarely going to have someone run away with a game because you do get that special ability if you're in last place, and that special ability is very, very nice. Overall, I really did enjoy Keep the Crown, and if you are looking for a nice beginner's game, a nice uh, introductory game, something like that, or if you're just looking for a great family game, because this is a great family game, I can highly recommend you check out Keep the Crown, currently on a Kickstarter near you. Check out the link below. If you check them out, tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Keep the Crown. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Also check out BoardGameExchange.com. It's better than biscuits and gravy. Which is really, really nice. Uh, I don't know what kind of that is, some kind of stone. And then also, so you can check who's the loser who gets the little <laughs> multicolored magic wand that says, I need help, which I find kind of funny as well. Let's go on.